Okay, this is the second video of my LaserJet Cinema class. Um, I'm going to cover just sort of how to actually use the software and also cover some of the steps to get set up. Um, folks in my mono class are probably already familiar with these uh, steps, but I'm just going to record them. Um, for folks who have not taken my mono class, um, feel free to follow along. You may have more questions about the film side of things, which I will not necessarily get into as much here. Um, but, you know, if you have questions, feel free to ask me. Okay, so, and if you haven't watched the installation video, please watch that beforehand because you need to get everything installed. So if you've watched that video, you know we've now got a folder here with our two applications. We've installed all the Illustrator stuff, that sort of thing. So the next thing we need to do, well, is actually one thing we need to do before we begin all this, which is print out our template. So um, let's see, where is our template here? So here's our template. Bring it down into the screen I'm actually recording on. Okay, so here's our template. Um, you're going to want to print this. One very important thing to know when you print this is you want to make sure that your scale is set to 100%. So you can print out of Acrobat, you can print out of Preview, print out of whatever. Just make sure you're not scaling down the image. If you scale down the image, the template will not work for you. So you will need to print this out. Um, in general, uh, one of these pages will hold about 30, or sorry, about 10 seconds of film. So there's one, two, three, I think there's like 10 strips here. Um, and there's 30 frames per strip if you use the, the technique I do, and that equals 300 frames, so that's like, I think it's like 12 seconds, 10, 12 seconds, something like that. So um, you'll need to print out as many of these as you have for a video. I do not recommend starting with a 30 minute video. That is insane, please don't do that. Start with something short, start with a minute, start with 30 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever. Get used to the process before you jump to the crazy idea you have to laser print your entire film. That's like crazy idea I don't recommend doing it but if you're gonna do it start small and build up so you'll print out this piece of paper you'll print it out multiple times next you will need clear leader um, the best place to buy clear leaders from Urbanski um, don't buy it in a hundred foot rolls because that's very expensive um, I think they like if you buy it in thousand foot that is um, a lot cheaper it's like half the price you probably don't need a thousand though so you kind of want to shoot somewhere in the middle um, you can email our band scan sort of say like I've got an idea for this like here's what I want to do and it'll be usually probably be like you'll probably want like 300 feet I think would probably be about a good same length of, of uh, film I bought the thousand foot roll I am I'm looking at it now I'm like three quarters way through it so what you want to do is you will then lay out your film and you will have little perforations on your sides because you will only have single per film you will lay them out and you will want to make sure that you just sort of lay out a rough piece of film that that goes from something above this first place down to past your 30th place and you're just going to cut out little strips so you'll cut out like you know half here half here with scissors it doesn't really matter you don't need to worry about like using um, a splicer yet you just want to lay it out so you're going to place your uh, film on each one of these rolls the most important thing to do is to try to line up the perfs as best as possible um, in order for the registration to work, you need the perfs to perfectly align with these uh, little, you know, perf cutouts. What I recommend doing is actually buying one of those cheap LED light tables. They're like 25 bucks. Um, light one of those up when you put your paper down, then you can sort of see, you can all sort of line up where the, um, where the film is. As a reminder, you need clear leader. You don't want to buy anything with already film on it. That's not how this stuff works. So you're just going to laser print on a clear, clear leader. It's actually a lot cheaper, so buy the clear stuff. If you're feeling very cheap, you can buy used film off eBay or something and just bleach it. Um, that's a video for another topic or like a topic for another video, whatever the order is there. Um, I would probably recommend if you've never done this before not to do that because you might buy film that when you bleach it, it has a color to it or something else. So buy Clear Leader, buy it from Urbanski because it's probably the cheapest or the only place to buy it from. I'll drop a link to them um, in the video. So you've now cut out all of your strips. You're going to tape using like double-sided tape at the at the last frame here. So you're going to tape a little bit here. You're going to tape a little bit in the middle and a little bit at the bottom. I recommend you do little bits of tape for every row and not just a long strip. If you do a long strip across the top, uh, it'll warp. So that might screw up your, your printer. Um, so you're going to tape all of your leader onto each of these little grids. That way you've got it set up as a template. So again, you'll probably need to spend a good couple hours just doing that. If you're going to shoot like a minute long piece, you'll need at least 10 pages. You'll need to do all that work. It takes a while. It is not the quickest process. So just be aware of that. I'm going to assume you've got all that done. You're ready to go. Next is you will need your video. 
So we're gonna go over here. I've got a little short little video here of this woman that just started shaking her hair out. I don't know what it is. Uh, I got off Art Grid, shout out Art Grid, but it's a fun little video and I think it will highlight some of the issues that I will wanna talk about. So um, this video is clearly not 4.3. So an important thing to know about using, uh, if you wanna project this on a projector, your film must be 4.3. There are not really super 16 projectors. Um, if you want 16 by nine, you just wanna scan it back in, um, you can use Super 16. We'll talk about those steps in a second. If I had to guess, I think this is a Super 16 proportion. Let's just see here. Uh, 2048. So it's actually a little bit bigger than Super 16. Okay, so let's just assume we want to have it on... Um, we want to print it. If we want to actually have it 4.3, so we're going to show it, project it, so that sort of thing. So as I mentioned, we've got these little applications here. So obviously the first thing we're going to do is crop it 4.3. You could do that in any of your video editing applications, Resolve, After Effects, Premiere, whatever you use, you could do it there. Um, if you already have a video done, you probably don't wanna go open that back up and like play around with that. I have a little tool here called Crop 4.3. This will just crop from the center. So again, if you don't wanna do cropping or you wanna have letterbox, whatever, you could use other tools for that. I'm just gonna assume that you've got something close to 4.3 and it's fine to crop it. So first thing we can do is just drag this into Crop 4.3. It will run. If you upload, like, or if you're trying to use like a 30 minute video, this process will take a very long time, which is why I recommend, even if you've got a 30 minute video, which is insane, by the way, I've mentioned this multiple times, that is not a good idea. But if you're gonna do it, uh, cut it down into smaller pieces. Cut it down into smaller clips, that way you can use this process and sort of keep going on it. So see here, now I've got a smaller video, and sure enough, it is now 4.3. Didn't really crop too much of that woman out. This also resizes it to 1440 by 1080, so if that's the size you wanna go with in, a, in an editing program, please feel free to use that. So now we have our crop video. Next thing we need to do here is we need to go and convert it to frames. So remember the way we're gonna print this, we're gonna print every single frame on the template. So we need to convert our video to frames, that's what this application will do. Drag it on there. And now it's gonna create a folder. Now, I dragged my video, or I moved my video into this folder just for sanity and for good uh, demoing purposes. Your video could be anywhere, and it would be fine. It's just going to um, create the crop video and the folder wherever your video is. So if your video is in a crazy location, you have to go find it. One thing I should also note, if your video is in like a folder that's like a library folder inside of your user, some of this whole little errors because there's some security stuff within those those places. So make sure your video is like in desktop or downloads or some folder, like your documents. Um, anywhere else might throw errors and I can't really help you. You just have to move it out into one of these other locations. Things, things we've learned by already demoing this in class. So just being aware of that. Okay, so now this is run. If I double click in here, you'll see I have individual frames for every one of these pieces. Um, this process, if you're film was recorded at like 30 frames a second or 40 frames a second or I don't know 60 frames a second this will convert it to every single frame the downside of that is that when it projectors will project at 24 frames per second so if your video was at 30 this is going to be a little bit slower if your video is at 60 it's going to be really slow so I'd say make sure your video is at 24 frames a second uh, 1440 by 1080 if you're using an editing application so now we have all our pieces, so now we need to go ahead and run Illustrator. So let me just go ahead and open up Illustrator here. Unfortunately, this does require Adobe applications. I know not everyone has uh, all that money for the monthly or yearly subscription. Sorry about that. I will work on an update for that in the future. Um, but for now, it's just a little bit easier to use Illustrator. So what we're gonna to do to create our new file here is we're gonna to go to File, we're gonna to go to Scripts, and we're going to go to Other Script. And now, if you recall, what we did is we added those .jsx files, those are script files. So we're gonna to, go to Applications, we're gonna to go to Illustrator, we're gonna to go to Scripting, we're gonna to go to Mono, and we're gonna to go to this file. If this file is grayed out for you, that's what I talked about in that previous video, which is like we might need to do some funkiness to actually get this file in here for you. Um, if that's happening to you and you're in one of my classes, email me, we'll figure it out. 
Uh, if you're not, Slack me, and I can probably tell you the steps to get it. So now we're just going to select this JSX file. We're going to hit Open. And it will pull up this little menu. Sorry, it was off the screen for a second there. It'll pull this menu, and it'll say, OK, how many frames per column? So in this case, if we look at our template, where did my template go? Uh, let me open my template again. So you'll see these columns are numbered. So I've got, uh, you know, at the top is 0. I've got 10, 20, 24, 30. So I'm just going to assume 30 tends to be a really safe amount. Every printer can print this. Um, so 30 is a good number to sort of start with. And it's nice and even. It's like 1 and 1 quarter of a second per, uh, per, per strip, essentially. So I'm going to start with 30. If you have some specific need, like you're working on, I don't know, some other piece and it needs to be 24, you can edit that here. Next, I mentioned you could print Super 16. So if you want to keep that 16 by 9 and you just want it for scanning purposes and you don't want to actually project it, you can select Super 16. Um, I'm going to assume that we're all doing 4.3. We're going to keep it to regular. Lastly, there's these other steps here. I don't even know how much I want to get into this. You could have a 16 by 9 film, and you could set it to pad, which would then sort of shrink it to 4.3 but keep space above and below. It gets a little messy. I would say keep it a stretch. That's just going to force everything to the same size. So if you actually generate your frames without actually turning it to 4.3, and it's like a weird proportion, this stretch will actually stretch it to 4.3, which is maybe going to introduce some weird glitchiness or weirdness to your film. Maybe you want to use that for your experimental film. Maybe you don't. Just be aware of it. Um, all the defaults are usually what your default should be. But if you want to go off script, go for it. At this point, we're going to hit OK. And now we need to go and find the image folder, right? So it says select image folder. So we're just going to go back over here, in here. And this is my image folder. I'm going to hit Open. If you are on a slow computer, or if you ha didn't heed my advice and you uploaded a 30-minute film of frames, this is going to take quite a long time. For me, this is, I believe, a 10-second video, so it shouldn't take too long. Um, but it will take quite a while for other people. So see, mine just finished, and I'm on a pretty fast machine. And it takes a little bit of rendering time to actually render out all the frames. But sure enough, here we go. So this ended up being like one frame short of the entire page. So now what you want to do is you can print this directly onto your leader that you've now taped to a to your pa pa the piece of paper. Make sure you load your machine right. You might want to do a, a print test on a blank sheet of paper just to make sure it's working the way you expect it to before you go printing on the actual leader, because if you mess it up, it's a lot more work you have to do to, to fix that. The next thing you're going to notice is all of these frames are actually upside down. And if you actually look, they're actually flipped left to right as well. So they're rotated 180 degrees and flipped left to right. That's because for a projector, if you're not familiar using projectors or anything analog film, this is what we would call projector ready, meaning it is in the right orientation to be run through a projector. The other thing you should notice is that on that template, it notes that the last frame is actually top left, and the first frame is bottom right. So that's, again, important to remember if you're going to project this, is that what you really want to do is, the way I've set this up is to sort of build your reel, is you might want to apply some tail here, right? So using some, some blank leader, or I guess white leader. Um, you want to build your tail. So what you would do is you build out a little tail, stick it to your reel, and then you would tape the tail to this section, and you would tape, you would splice this part to this part, this part to this part, until you were finished, and then what you would have is your first frame would be ready to go into the projector. You probably want to add some head as well. So you want to add more white leader as well just to get that. This is set up for projection. That's the whole point of this. Um, if you're not used to that process, this might be a little confusing. Um, also, didn't even cover, you probably want to have a splicer. Um, if you don't own a splicer, you can buy them off eBay, although they're not cheap. They're about $250 right now because everyone wants one. Um, or maybe there's a local film lab near you that you could rent time there and use their splicer. Um, I don't recommend using scotch tape or anything else. That's kind of crazy. So use a splicer. Um, but at this point, you are pretty much ready to go. So you could print out more of this. If you do upload, um, like, say, a 20-second video, this Illustrator file will actually build all of your pages individually. So it'll give you page one, two, three, four. And it'll be in reverse order. So again, you'll want to print out one page, do all the splicing, 
print out the next page while splicing. I don't recommend printing everything out and then pulling off the page and then you're like, wait, what's the order of everything? Unless it's a project that you're trying to do. Um, I generally recommend printing out one page in the printer at each time. Don't stack a bunch of sheets in there because that will actually tend to lead to jams and sticks and like sticker stickery issues, that sort of thing. So um, do it one sheet at a time. It's gonna take a little bit longer, but it will actually like lead to better quality. Okay, so that's all the steps. Um, the install was a lot. Now this step is actually pretty easy. Um, and once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to do more and more of this. So it'll be kind of cool. Um, yeah, so that's the whole process. Uh, again, let me know if you have questions. The 35 mil process works the exact same. You've got pretty much the exact same perf options, um, except it's gonna be a much wider, a much larger uh, frame of view. Um, yeah, so hope this works for everybody. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. I'm happy to help people with that a little bit. Uh, I have one more video that I'm gonna cover some advanced techniques um, because people don't necessarily know Illustrator that well. If you're making films, it's probably not a tool you're using very often, but I wanna show some cool techniques you can do um, with Illustrator uh, in order to get sort of like a direct animation feel with these tools. So watch out for that video next.